that's it. Transworld Sport recently headed to New Zealand to catch up with a rising star of the heptathlon world by the name of Portia Bing. The 23-year-old competed at her first world championships in Beijing last year and finished in a creditable 16th place. It was a crazy experience and I mean, the funniest thing was after I ran my hurdles, I started getting Facebook messages, um, this was at the World Champs, Facebook messages and people would go, oh my gosh, congratulations, you're the first New Zealand to ever come second in a hurdles race, like they have no idea what the cap on is. They were just like congratulating me after every event. And the 200, I think that was um, uh, broadcasted live here. And so many people, my friends were like texting me, oh my God, you just came second, you won a silver medal in the 200. And I was like, no, it's just the heptathlon, it's actually heat three as well. <laughs> Porsche trains at Sport New Zealand's High Performance Centre in Auckland. Her coach is 86-year-old veteran of the New Zealand athletic scene, Russell Hoggard. The duo have been working together for the past six years and have built up a good relationship off the track too. That's something which certainly helps make the long training sessions a more enjoyable experience. <laughs> Her and I were mates, aren't we? Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah, we're not liable to get into trouble. Um, and uh, she gradually came through the grades. She used to be on the back of the bunch, and then she was in the middle of the bunch. Then she got out the front of the bunch, and then she got too good for the rest of the bunch. So, so most of her training sessions are done with other athletes that are away from the development group. Portia has been involved with athletics from a very young age. Last year's World Championships were her first taste of a major global competition, and going up against the likes of Britain's Jessica Ennis-Hill and Canada's Brienne Tyson-Eaton brought out the best in her. See it? I was absolutely stoked. So, to be unranked, to be absolutely like unknown, and to go out there and actually perform and the top 16 in my mind is that I can, I'm actually like, I'm actually being a competitor. I'm not just there as numbers and participating. And I guess that's always one of the biggest fears is to spend however many years of your life doing something and then to turn up to the biggest event of your life and realise that you're actually not good enough or you're only participating, you're not um, a competitor. So for me, like, that was like, honestly, a biggest relief is that, okay, I actually can do this. I am um, competitive in it and hopefully over time I'll get more and more competitive, but I'm not just here making up numbers. On day one in Beijing, Portia set three personal bests and she was in eighth place overall after four events. However, her inexperience at the elite level showed on the second day of competition and this is something that she knows needs addressing if she's to progress in the event. Nothing can compare that kind of competition, that level of competition, the people and just I guess how serious everyone was. So one of the things um, my physio told me, he said to me, you know, you got to get your head in the game. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. And he said to me, no, you're not. He's like, you're smiling away too much. He's like, everyone's serious, heads under towels, like, and stuff. And, but I, I don't know, I enjoyed it way more than I think a lot of the other girls did. A lot of them, it's, I guess, a career and a, it's like a job that they have to do. But I really loved getting out there and, yeah, competing in front of the crowds and stuff was exciting. Coach Hoggard too knows what areas Porsche has to improve on in the years ahead and he'll be passing on all of his vast knowledge to his young charge. Yeah, she's not bad. Um, Porsche's problem is she's lacking a little bit in speed. All the other things we can fix, we can make her stronger. For where she is, 16th in the world, she's lacking in a bit of experience too because, you know, we live down here and backside of the world and there's not the opportunities for her to compete in her event. At 86 years of age, Russell is probably one of the oldest active track and field coaches in the world, but the age gap is of no consequence to Portia. He said to me, you know, if he ever, if I get to a point where he can't offer me or make me any better, he'll, he'll stop and that'll be it. And I guess for him, I'll be his last um, athlete. 
has us international athletes so that's a really big thing and like it's such a big commitment to be 86 years old and still reading journals and searching on the internet and watching jewels and learning from people um, and that yeah so in my mind that's just a that's a massive commitment so I'm, I'm obviously so happy to be still be with him and we'll be with him until he tells me to go somewhere else until he kicks me out I guess. The heptathlon is made up of seven events, the 100 hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200 metres, long jump, javelin and 800 metres. With so much to master, Portia actually has a number of coaches overseeing her progress. On top of that, she has her own strength and conditioning coach in Adam Storey. She's naturally a very, very powerful athlete, so whether it's in the gym or on the track, um, her power in terms of muscular power definitely shows through. Um, she's got a high degree of coordination in any type of movement that she picks up as well, so for us, Rio is going to be a huge, huge milestone for Porsche. Um, then moving forward, we're definitely looking at um, Tokyo as being the, the next major pinnacle we would look to potentially medal. Away from the track, Porsche has found a welcome escape in yet more work. She has a part-time job at a shoe shop just a short drive away from the training centre. It definitely helps me to switch off and I mean like, it's a customer based service so you have customers come in and tell you all sorts of great stories and stuff. And you spend so much of your time as an athlete kind of caring about yourself and it is quite a selfish thing so it's really nice to be able to go just to a job and um, spend time seeing what other people do and listening to what other people have been doing each day and what they need, you know, they need some shoes for this event or they're doing other, other people are doing exciting things in their life. So. After a long day working and training, it's back home to the small town of Kumu where Portia lives with her family. She's one of six children and the family are very close. Being only two years apart, um, we were forever as kids at each other's throats. So um, it was a big factor growing up, me against her, her against me and so on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's helped me grow as a person and, and mould her as well. So it's um, yeah, a really big part of, of our, each other's lives and we're still to this day very competitive with each other. The family haven't quite got used to the attention that Porsche's track success has started to bring. They always laugh. It's like when, like, you know, every time they see me on TV, they just think it's funny. <laughs> um, but no, they are really, really supportive. Um, I guess it's a bit of a weird... It's just, it's just, like, there's nothing insanely, especially amazing about my family. Like, you know, we're just, we're just normal New Zealand people. So for them to see uh, me at the World Champs and stuff like that, it's, it's exciting, exciting for their friends. We're all 100% behind her and um, really enjoy seeing her get out there and do what she does best. And the fact that she loves it is um, even more joyful for us to see that. Portia is yet to qualify for her first Olympics, but she's aiming for Rio 2016. She hopes to meet the required 6,200 points in the coming weeks, which will secure her passage to the Games. The first Olympics will stand her in good stead for those longer-term ambitions, and Russell is quick to make sure where the focus must be. Murray Helberg once said to me, be a good athlete, you've got to keep your eyes down. And I think what he meant was, um, if you looked up and saw the possibility of success and the possibility of failure, you'd never do the work to get the success. So we don't do long-term plans, but yeah, it'd be nice to get on an Olympic podium, it would be tremendous. I want to win something. <laughs> I haven't won anything in so long, so it'd be nice to win something. If I can achieve there, then it maybe inspires or helps motivate my lazy sister and my little sister. The older one, she's a bit lazy, so if, if I can do something like that, that would be kind of long-term goal would be win something or get a medal or a trophy or something and then hopefully it'll inspire them a little bit. <laughs>